all of you, praise God, and uh, good to come together as uh, God's children to worship Him and to exalt Him and to come to His presence with joy. And the songs that we sang this morning attest to that we want to thank Him for all that He has done, and we want to appreciate that He has taken our place, my place, your place, so that we could have eternal life. We could be His children. If we have to be his children, he has to be our father. And that is the day that the world celebrates, that this is a father's day. So, a, 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 a greetings to, to all those who are fathers, and those who would be fathers, uh, at some stage, in some form. And so, uh, let's uh, look at a few scripture portions to understand what we have. And then we can continue worshipping the Lord in the same spirit that we sang songs in His presence. Um, usually I try to limit my time. I think today I will take a bit liberty and go a little bit more. Uh, leave another 15 minutes more. But I'll still try to finish off before you get really bored. Uh, the topic that uh, I have uh, thought of prayerfully is uh, about the Father, because it's the Father's day. And um, it is an assignment that I was given unexpectedly, but uh, it's good that we, we, we can share God's word. Um, and I was looking at Father, if, you have, if somebody is a father, they must be a child, they must be a daughter, they must be a son. And the word of God, we have an excellent example here of the lost son, the prodigal son, goes away. So the other side is the father. And uh, I was looking at, we heard a number of messages, uh, this prodigal son, and then no, 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 it's prodigal father. And so I put them together and said, okay, the prodigals, both father and son, in different way, they're prodigals. And I won't take too long, I'll take a bit, but uh, before I continue, I'll just, uh, I mean, this time to the Lord for a few minutes and then we continue. Father God, we thank you for this morning that you have given us in our lives to come uh, and gather as your children uh, to worship you, dear God. Lord, as we look at the, the story of the father and the son, and the son who was lost and came back, and the father who was waiting, Lord, we want to know and reflect that it represents you uh, who is waiting for us, who waited for us until we came to you. Here we come as new children now. Lord, pray Lord once again that you would give us the ability to appreciate of how you great a father you are, a loving father you are. So we could relate to you once again afresh. And thank you for this blessed uh, privilege that you given us to be your children. We ask for this. Amen. Amen. Uh, so you find uh, in the picture there um, the father running towards the son, and the son. <coughs> is not even able to look at the father. Uh, somebody has uh, uh, imagined it told, and it is not uh, perhaps uh, uh, different from what the reality would have been on that day. But the son realized how bad he was and he said, let me go back to my father. He runs there and then he's not able to even see. He said, I am less than the servant. Even servants have better opportunity. And but father was having the same, same love. That's the gist of what I'm going to share. Um, and the next slide is something that I included around this morning. Uh, nothing to do with, with the topic, but I thought I, I should share the small story there. And uh, there's a guy by name, Brother Philip from the United States. Uh, you can see the same person left side with the red t-shirt, and right side he was sit he's sitting there, uh, squatted. He goes around the world. He goes around the world, preaching the word of God. He goes around the world, doesn't go to churches and big meetings. He, preaches on the street, uh, on the road. And in uh, London he was preaching and then somebody complained to him. And um, uh, this policeman came and said, oh, I got a complaint, what is this? So he starts actually preaching to the policeman and explains all that he said. So what's wrong, it's pretty well. And, and the policeman also listens very, very carefully. And then he comes to, yesterday, he was in Mumbai, in India. And then he preaches everywhere on the streets and uh, lots of people and then he, goes to a street vendor and then this woman right side down the corner and he finds her name and then uh, 
prays for her and says, what can you pray for her? She says, I have no peace at home. I have no peace at home. Can you pray? So the, the other woman is translated and uh, he prays for that lady and after the prayer was over, the prayer was going on, lots of people watching around and there's also a Swamiji with the red robes on the left side. He also intensely, intensely listens to the prayer and as soon as the prayer was over, then uh, <coughs> Philip looks at him, he did thumbs up. Thumbs up. But there is a great opportunity to share the good news of our Father. Everywhere. Everywhere. So, just want to challenge you. When was the last time you greet somebody on the road? They are a stop. Let's go to the new person. The message. Um, you find another story. And this story, <coughs> so two sons. Please, please make yourself comfortable. Um, the two sons, and the first left side is a person that I know is my classmate. Therefore, I can't put his uh, picture. Uh, and when we were growing up, he said, "Oh, oh, that's my dad going." Uh, and the dad is going because dad's car was going. That's what it says. And then we looked at in some other context, looking at the album, and we found another person in my family photograph. Who is this? Oh, he's my school teacher. And later on, we found out that the so-called school teacher is his dad, but he couldn't relate. Whereas the person, oh, is my dad, that uh, he was going in a car because he got a car in status. Is actually his brother-in-law and many years later the brother-in-law happened to start reporting to me in whole place when I got a job I been studied and he started being he reported to me so people have difficulty in relating to father they look at the position status rather than who the real father is go in the wrong directions misconceptions and the right side is another father son who did not know who his father was until he became a father to himself because he didn't, mother didn't tell him, he didn't know and he was struggling and they, then he only had some name and he found it searching and searching that he goes to his wife after marriage and became father his desire to know his father became so acute and he goes and talks to his wife and says, only the name goes and sits in the church and suddenly a fourth of the church they start singing a song like this like they sang and then uh, the wife looks at, him, looks at the Bible which had a family name which is similar to this man's family name. And so they have the service is over. What is this? Do you know anybody with this family name? Oh, that's my dad. So if that is your dad, then I'm the son. Oh, really? No, I'll go and check. So they go, she goes home. Can we come? And then when she goes home, uh, and then the couple also goes to the sister's house so that they can get more details of church service. Um, he says, look, I'm sorry, I spoke to everybody, my dad does not have any son, I asked everybody if they did not have a son, but then dad himself didn't know that he had a son. And then uh, this picture is when finally they, they share and recognize and he talks to his dad for the first time. So you can see that's a picture. And later on the story says that now I have a dad, I have a relationship. I want to have a relationship. That's the story. And it, they go to the same 35 years later, he found his dad and now they have a, they have a great time now and they play games. And they have a relationship with the father that he found, he had already, but he didn't have a relationship and he found, started establishing the relationship. These are the two people, two sons. One didn't want to recognize, the other one sought and found the dad to start the relationship. Here we go. The next one. Now, on the Sunday when we come, who is your father? What kind of relationship do we have? Do you have a father? Do I have my father? Just pass, pass it, I'll be quick. Now let's go to the, the topic. Uh, the prodigals, the prodigals. The prodigal story is about father, about the son. The story usually is about the prodigal son. The, the subject of the story, uh, is generally what comes to mind is that son runs away, does all the story and father. Father is not a picture, just there waiting. He goes round and round and then comes back. So how much he lost money, how much he squandered and all those things. And the repentance and coming back. 
But the story is, on the other side, is a father who is waiting for his son all the time that the son has gone from home. Son is busy doing so many things, but father is also busy just waiting. Or, you know how difficult it is? You can be busy getting, doing so many things and then forgetting certain issues. But can you be busy just waiting and doing nothing, waiting for things to happen? And there's big waiting. That's the story of the problem and the prodigal father. Uh, this morning I want to bring your attention. Father has been waiting. And how do we know? Even when the son was far off, he ran to him to meet him. If he's not waiting, he would not be doing that. Now, we will look at the, the scripture portion. Uh, I have just put only the few verses. Now, 15, we have a lot of scripture portion. We don't need all that uh, to, to highlight what we are looking at. Uh, not long after, Luke's Gospel chapter 15 is the story of the prodigal son. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. That's the summary uh, of the son's behavior. And what I like is, is from 30 to 16, we have not seen, but 17, we see when he came to census, it means after everything is gone, gone to the lowest point in life, the son came to census. So sometimes it requires to go to the lowest point to get to census. He came to census and then he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still long away, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He also ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. You know, the son said to him, to father, Father, I have sinned against you and and sorry, against heaven and against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And I put some words in the brackets, make me like one of your hired servants. That is what is recorded in the word of God as some thinking that I will go and tell my father that father you, you just make me one of your sons. So it says verse 17, when he came to senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? Here I am starving to death. I will go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and against you. Verse 19, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the prayer continues, Make me like one of your hired men, like your servants. That's what you want to say. But even before he could finish the sentence, he simply said, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Go, stop, don't tell any more, you are my son. You don't need to say anything more. Either you're not like my high servant, you are my son. So father interrupts his confession and says, you are my son. You don't need to say anything more, I've been waiting for you. But father said to his service, and then quick, bring the best robe, put it on me, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, give everything that belongs to him, a fat and cow, and, and, and then it says, was let's have a feast and celebrate. Celebration usually has feast. You can't really celebrate without feast. Celebrate, feast and celebrate. And the last phrase says, so they began to celebrate. And that's scripture question. I want I, I took time so that we follow the story. I won't say too much after that. But they began to celebrate. And some came to father to say all that he wants, to confess how bad he was, that he is not worthy to be his servant. Just make him as his servant. Father didn't allow him to say that bit. No, you are, you are a son before, you are a son now. And that's the father's heart. Now, a few more uh, slides and then we finish. Three things about the father towards his son. Father gave freedom to his son. He did not control him. He did not put him in jail. He did not um, restrict his movements. You are a son, you free son. You want to go? Father knew that son was not ready. But son was adamant. How many times we decided things on our own? Want to go and do things on our own? Okay, God allows. He goes and squanders. 
But even when the sun is spoiled, even when the sun is in the wrong place, even when the sun was misusing his time, father's love was always there, always lost, always lost. It did not diminish. Perhaps it, it, it was uh, behaviorally more manifest waiting, waiting. If, if the son was at home, maybe father did not have to wait that long, that long in, as much as he did. And the third one is he forgives everything. Very quick, <coughs> one, two, three. Gives freedom, as I mentioned. It is gone. But it's common for parents to think, hey, our children are not really ready for this. But, but they do allow children to say, I'm ready, they have they are super confident of getting things done. And only when they get into a problem, they come back and say, Dad, um, what do I do? The second one, as I mentioned, is uh, so father always loves. Son turns away. Took away all the inheritance. Just pause here for a moment. Took away all the inheritance. All that belonged to him is gone. So there is nothing physical inheritance that son has in his father's house. It's gone. He took away everything. But there's something that son has not taken away. You know what? Son has not taken away his share of his father's love. It was still there. He left it. He only took his oppositions, not father's love. So he could go back and, and it's there available for him. Father continued to love. The physical inheritance was taken away, squandered and wasted, came back empty handed. But his share of fatherly love was in full measure available there for him to come and enjoy. Third, father did not hold anything against him. Hey, you took your money, I told you so. You wasted, no? You were cheated, as if nothing happened. He came back. Father's love is there all the time. Father cuts him off. Don't say anything more. And don't worry to yourself. No, no, you are worthy to yourself. And how do I know? He proved this. He celebrated. Put the, finger, put the ring on the finger. Do all those things. Let's celebrate. Fatten, fatten, how, whatever it is. Cut, enjoy. Let's be happy, merry. So that is the Father's forgiveness that is manifested and didn't allow him to say anything more. Now, there are two more scripture portions which I'll be very, very quick and finish off again about Father. Remember the lost son, the, the parable is also by Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, this also talks about uh, Father to his disciples. First one is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, 9 to 13. And I put the scripture portion there straight away. And this is a prayer that uh, Lord Jesus Christ taught to his disciples. His father teaches how to, uh, uh, yes, how, how do we pray to Father? Oh, Pray to Father, how do we pray? Don't you know that? Okay, I'll teach you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So, if you want to pray to God, Jesus teaches them to call God as Heavenly Father. He's a Father. Father will take care of the children. And then, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come and your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Now, give me about 30 seconds and watch the word. Uh, notice the words that I have underlined. Is a father in heaven? Father knows, as we saw in the parable, the children all the time, whatever they do, even when they goof up. But, the prayer is God's will must be done. What is His will? That none should perish but have everlasting life. And He gives people what they need. Daily bread. Word of God. And He forgave them. He forgave them. Forgive us our debts. But forgiveness is, is a godly character. Always. Why? Once you are forgiven, you no longer belong to the evil <coughs> one. He no longer belongs to Satan. Last line, deliver us from the evil one. Once you are delivered from the evil one, in whose hands are we? You and I, we are no longer in the evil one's hands. We are in different ways. God's hands. Is that not what salvation is? All about. So once we are in the God's hand, not in the evil one's hands, we are in God's hands, who has forgiven us, when his will is done, we are saved. That's what he was teaching in the disciples. 
our Father in heaven, God is not a God who is monitoring and with a big stick, um, always deciding to punish, uh, waiting to punish children, but He is trying, waiting to redeem them, give them an opportunity to forgive them and make them His children. That's why His Father. The next one is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, um, 9 to 10. There's another story about Father. Jesus tells to disciples, Hey, disciples, you are useless. Actually, he calls them much worse. He says, You are actually evil. Verse 7 Though you are evil, and you know how to give good gifts to your children, though you are evil. And then the word has got to be your first night at the beginning. Which of you, if your son asks for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if you ask for a fish, will give a snake? <coughs> Even if, if, if you, then, though you are evil, so even though you are not nice people, but as a human being, as a father, know how to treat your children with gifts. When they give good gifts to your children, how much more would good, the good father, the heavenly father, who is always willing to uh, forgive us, always willing uh, to give us daily bread, who is always waiting to receive the, the repentant son, uh, will not know. How much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And that's what again, I like, what father, Jesus tells them, if you, such people, evil people, bad people, no, evil probably is, is uh, is a word that we are not able to accept. We say, what is evil? No, as human beings, we are imperfect. If, let me put imperfect people, selfish people. If you know how to treat your children, how much more God will treat every one of us? And that is what Jesus has done. He has treated us not according to our iniquities. He has not treated us not according to our iniquities. He did not treat us. He did not treat us, but He treated us out of His mercy. Even though we deserve some punishment, he didn't give it to us, but he gave us the gift of life. He gave us salvation. <laughs> if you go to the next slide and you find, to all those who ask, the children ask the, the fathers who are evil, they know how to give good gifts. But all those who ask, Lord, I seek your forgiveness. Yet to all those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called his children. Whose children? Father's children. Who is his father? The heavenly father. Who is the heavenly father? The one who loved and sent his only begotten son. So that you and I don't have to punish but have everlasting life. Remission of sins. John's Gospel to 1 12. And in the same um, book of uh, John's Gospel, we know verse 3 16 that he God loved us so much, the whole world. He sent his only begotten son so that none, none, none of you and me here are the devil one should perish but have everlasting life. And to those who accepted him, he said, yes, I want. Remember, Jesus was telling the disciples, you give one. When the children ask something, you give good one. And to those, all of us who he asked, Lord, come into our heart. Lord, bring accept us as his children. He gave the right to be called his children. And so, we have the right to claim and call the heavenly father as our father. The heavenly God created as our father. And that's this story I want to bring to your attention this morning. Now, the last one. I told you about two sons. Did you seek out to your father and uh, become his child? Did you have a relationship? You know you have assurance of salvation, that you are in the same hands? If so, you can call him our father in heaven, my father in heaven. And if you have that relationship, why not open our mouths? Say, Lord, thank you that you have taken me to be your son, your daughter, your child, and that I will have your inheritance forever and ever. And I can enjoy your love full, even though I went away and came back, it is always there for me. So I can enjoy. Thank you very much. Let's open our mouths. May God help us to do this.